What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this finally Friday, November 24th, 2023. Uh, a lot of folks doing that Black Friday sale out here. I think I'm going to stay home. I'm not one to partake too much in the uh, craziness of saving a few dollars. All right, uh, what is it? Uh, about 12 13 p.m. here, California time. We did have some larger earthquake activity overnight including a 6.9 earthquake here into the uh, portion of the mariana trench uh, this 6.9 down here at the bottom of the list kicked off a uh, pretty good swarm of aftershock activity about one o'clock this morning at 6.9 coming in 16 kilometers deep there into the northern mariana islands area now we have seen quite a few aftershocks following that large movement this is just south of the area that did see quite a bit of uh, regional stress out here in the past couple months. You remember the Izu Trench Swarm? I think it's been past the 30-day mark, but uh, we had a pretty good swarm up here. A little bit north uh, back in oh October, early October, I believe. Uh, we've seen quite a bit of earthquake activity. Now, uh, some further large-scale movement down south here. This type of activity obviously tells me that there's quite the strain out here against the Mariana Trench, the Filipino Plate in general, and that's all got to do with the Pacific Plate moving off towards the northwest here. Uh, that kind of leaves this area vulnerable uh, in terms of some larger scale potential. I've been chatting about this uh, lack of large scale movement here across the Kurokamachaka Trench for quite some time, uh, I think is... These little swarms go on and we see some further earthquake activity. It's just applying further stress up here for a big one uh, in this area north of Japan. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I know we've seen some activity up in Alaska with a 5.0 coming in just a short time ago. Uh, looks like the USGS is not picking up on that. Uh, missing an earthquake there it looks like. Uh, that is along the Aleutian Trench. That earthquake coming in. Uh, let's see here. About 9 o'clock my time this morning, 5 kilometers, or uh, 10 kilometers deep for that 5.0. A little bit of further activity across the Aleutian Trench eastward here, back prior to the subduction zone level itself. Got a couple small quakes here, including a 4.5 and a 3.6. A little bit of activity stirring up here off the coast of Mexico, but on the Pacific side here of the plate boundary, Got a little plate here called the Cocos Plate and the Nazca Plate down south here. This activity uh, stirring up looks like in uh, some of those divergent zones here off the coast of Mexico, well south of the Baja California area for a 4.9 in the last hour. Pacific Northwest, one little earthquake up here. Uh, just north of Portland, a 3.1, 20 kilometers deep. I believe that's associated there with a portion of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, also south here into the Cascadia just prior just prior to the subduction zone level itself a 2.8 seen a little bit of activity stirring up out here recently uh, California anything major going on overnight here doesn't look like it uh, did have some activity up north here outside of Redding near Shingletown it's going to be a 2.8 aside from that mostly smaller microquakes out here today but Looking about average in terms of the multitude of quakes across the region. A handful of earthquakes there across Los Angeles as well. Uh, again, all small microquake activity in the last 24 hours. Uh, nothing going on up here across Yellowstone. Uh, let me give a real, quick, a real quick glance here at the Yellowstone overview. There's that 6.9 signature. Showed up pretty nicely here. Even at Yellowstone, thousands of miles away from the epicenter of that earthquake. But that just goes to show you how sensitive these equip this equipment is in terms of picking up ground movement. As far as local seismic activity goes, not a whole lot here at Yellowstone. Maybe a handful of small, very small earthquakes there across Yellowstone, but that's about it. Further down south, Texas was rocking and rolling yesterday with a 4.2. That activity is continuing here in the cluster outside of Pecos, Texas. Uh, right around the oil fields area. Uh, a little bit of movement down here in the, uh, well, let's see, this is going to be the plate boundary of the Nazca and the Cocos plate here. little unzipping going on here, it looks like, with a, quite a few fours stirring up 
earlier this morning. That uh, yeah, that earthquake just off the coast of Panama. That 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 activity further to the north around Puerto Rico. We were watching a handful of earthquakes up here last night. Looks like that has basically died off, and um, today only a couple smaller quakes down here across the Puerto Rico region. South America, look at this one. This one's got to be a deep one. Anytime you see an earthquake ways away from the plate boundary down here uh, in the South America region, that's going to be a deep quake. So 4.4, um, 4, 564 kilometers deep for that earthquake. That is a deep one in that area uh, about 7 o'clock this morning. So keep an eye upstream for some possible larger scale movement. Normally these earthquakes here, those deep ones, do trigger strain upstream. Uh, down south of Australia, we've got some movement kicking up here as well. Uh, this divergent boundary out here uh, in the western Indian Antarctic Ridge, 4.9 this morning, 10 kilometers deep. So a lot of broad scale movement taking place here around the Pacific Plate in general. Um, in certain zones, you've got... Uh, Obviously, this activity up here is very shallow. It's not a subduction zone earthquake where we would uh, normally see it. But uh, it does look like uh, there's some considerable stress out here against the western areas of the Pacific Plate. Keep an eye on that region. handful of earthquakes out here across Hawaii. Some off the Big Island, including a 3.9, rather, rather shallow out here. One from yesterday as well, 2.2. Kilauea Volcano continuing with the earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and check out the latest information statement here on Kilauea Volcano. From the HVO folks here, uh, that was put out today it looks like. Uh, in this case, the volcano is currently not erupting. Uh, still seeing some earthquake activity and uh, I'm sure some inflation. Let's see what we got here for... Uh, Inflation data here across the Kilauea Volcano. It's been going up and down quite a bit here recently. We're going to check out the UWE station. Looks like we're starting to peak back up here. I was kind of mentioning this last night. If we were going to see a re-confirmation uh, here of the inflation. If you look at these other previous models here on the graph. Each inflation event had like a little down period. Followed up by... Uh, some uptick there. It's been a trend. Looks like we're continuing that here today. We'll take a look at that uh, a little bit later on. Now that's just a sign of magma uh, fluctuation going on below this area uh, with uh, you know potential recharging of the areas below. We'll definitely watch that. Uh, webcam imagery from this area. Obviously still got uh, some volcanic gases and whatnot going on there in that region. But really no major uh, changes, though. There's a better crater shot of the Lava Lake area. All right, uh, let's see. What else we got here? Iceland. What's going on up there in Iceland? Uh, let's go ahead and check out the latest information here. And this is put out this morning from the Icelandic Meteorological Office here. The unchanged situation based on the latest interpretation here of what's going on their understanding so to speak the likelihood of volcanic eruptions still being considered over the magma intrusion area uh, today they're reporting approximately 300 earthquakes have been detected since last night i'm getting a little bit less on that with their map uh, let's see here uh, this is just the last 12 hours even if we were to go back the last uh, 24 hours or so it's only shown about 141 earthquakes within this region, so maybe they're picking up some smaller quakes that maybe this um, this site is not picking up. But I, I don't want to keep it cluttered. I'd like to see what's going on here in recent, you know, in recent hours. And still, it looks a lot less than um, what we have seen in the past. Uh, most of the earthquake activity north of the Grindavik region of Iceland, north of Hagafell right around this area where they think the uh, a breakthrough could take place in terms of a fissure opening uh, for this eruption within this area right here. Uh, now that's a little bit closer to the Blue Lagoon area and the power plant, so still kind of continue to watch that. But uh, see what they're stating here. 
Uh, data from GPS measurements show that the deformation continues near the Svartsingi and the de deformation is still measured around the dike intrusion where the magma is accumulating below. Uh, however, there are indications that the rate of deformation have decreased based on data from the past week. So they believe potentially that some of this activity below is uh, solidifying, uh, turning back into you know more of a solid and um and that's possible that's a scenario that could take place doesn't always have to break through the surface things could uh you know cool down to an extent of where this magma just behaves below the surface um considering the latest interpretation of the data the likelihood of a volcanic eruption at some location along the length of the magma intrusion still persists uh, and here we're, they mentioned about the Hagafell and this region here in between these two regions that I showed you on the map. However, crustal relaxation continues to occur and seismicity decreases along with a decrease in magma flow to the intrusion. Uh, and of course, as time goes on, right, the likelihood of an imminent eruption uh, diminishes with time. So... I think we're kind of leaning more towards a, uh, you know, towards just this thing mellowing out, but we're not quite to that point of where we can say everything's safe uh, in this area. It's still obviously got some um, potential, but uh, the more that time goes on here in the Iceland region without an eruption, the more likely that this will probably just go away for now, temporarily. All right, uh, what else we got here? Anything else major going on across the world? New Zealand, haven't checked that yet. Uh, quiet zone, looks like here. 3.5 from yesterday. But uh, for the most part, all the activity up north into the Mariana Trench. Keep an eye, like I said, keep an eye on this Kuro Kamachaka. This is just, it's crazy how quiet it's been up here. This is a major subduction zone with a huge accumulated slip rate uh in that region but there's very minimal large-scale activity in it i think it's well overdue folks I'm not even joking that's that's a prime spot uh, a little bit of activity across the sumatra region the java trench with a 4.1 and a 3.5 mediterranean looks a little bit quieter here today and again uh they did have a 3.7 up there in iceland let me see where that was at Kind of curious to see where I think that was over. Was it 24 hours ago? And let's, unless the EMSC is reporting it uh, incorrectly, I'm really not seeing any three pointer out here. Maybe a little bit further south, it's not being covered here on this map. Um, but looking at this model here, it looks like most of the activity in the somewhat larger range is away from our area of interest here around the Rekis. Rekis ridge area where we're uh you know obviously still keeping an eye on this region right we'll, we'll see We've got one little earthquake coming in Let's see what we got here somewhere in the mix little point two still some uh activity stirring up down there we'll continue to watch that although we're, there's more of a northward trend here recently of the earthquake activity which is good news for the Grindavik area right hopefully these guys can recover their town and uh, that eruption stays away from this area all right space weather activity is another interesting topic goodness uh look at this i may have to go outside here today and see what i can see on the sun with the uh, with my solar lens because this is dynamic we don't see this too often here with a bunch of massive sunspots uh, huge cluster areas let's see what they're looking like today for magnetic complexity um <clears throat> Looks like this region up here, the area I had my eyeball on here last night, is a, a little on the quiet side. Looks like that may be stabilizing. This is still a very active region, but uh, the complexity here amongst this entire area looks like it's declining, unfortunately, uh, as it's facing the Earth directly. Um, further sunspots down here on the southeastern limb. Definitely quite active there in complexity. And, of course, we've got a couple newer sunspot regions coming around the eastern limb of the sun. It's still pretty active here, folks. Uh, overall threat, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 60. X flare around 10% chance. Now, we did have a uh, very little M flare peak out um, 
early morning hours or late last night. Very small, nothing big. Uh, looks like that was a M um, one point something other here, 1.1. Nothing big at all. I uh, didn't even get up into the uh, the noteworthy class here that Kevin has on the SolarHam.net site. There's all our sunspots. The complexity there continues among some some of them. Uh, we'll just have to watch that throughout the coming days here. They are in the p perfect position uh, to blast off um, potentially a strong flare at our planet, the Earth-Sun plane, so to speak here. We're directly looking at the sunspot region, so uh, keep an eye on that for sure, right? Uh, let's see. SFI is still somewhat elevated. This is the total energy being produced on the Earth-facing side. Uh, it's quite high, 194, um, and still we got that potential of some strong flaring. Who knows? All right, auroras, not a whole lot of auroras in the forecast for now unless we get some major CME Earth-directed activity happening. But uh, for now, things are pretty green across the board. Maybe a little enhancement here, looks like, on the 26th time period uh, below the G1 class or the, the Class G1 uh, category, 60% uh, chance of uh, auroras at the higher latitude, so we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on that. All right, uh, numerical models out here for the weather. Well, I'm kind of concerned about the West Coast to see what we got. I'm, I shouldn't say concerned. I'm more excited for the West Coast if we get these storm systems that uh, are supposed to be coming in this time of year. Um looks like that one's still going to hold together around the first week of December. This is a lot less than what it had originally shown. But it uh, looks like maybe the storm door may be opening up out here across the West Coast. As we head into the month of December, that's good news here because I'm ready for some rain. It's quite dry out here. We definitely need the rainfall. Severe weather potential out here today. Well... A little bit of thunderstorm activity, specifically right around the Four Corners area. But far as severe weather goes, well, these guys are not showing much. As far as the probability goes, just some thunderstorm activity. All right, folks, have yourself a good day. Black Friday. Goodness, that's, uh, I don't know, I can't, I really can't partake in that. It's just too, too crazy. I don't even like going to the stores in general. It's just... <laughs> I'd rather, I do a lot of online shopping, not a big fan of going out these days, kind of crazy out there, and more so today. All right, folks, have yourself a good day. Keep an eye on some regions. Um, without further stress out here in this area of the Izu Trench and Mariana Trench here, we definitely got to keep an eye on northward here across the Kuro Kamachaka. All that pressure's got to go somewhere. It's potentially, it could be building up further up here, or we could see some further activity across the western edge here of the Filipino plate with that uh, obvious momentum of pressure headed towards the west-northwest. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight. Have a good one. Stay safe out there.